Hey everybody, uh, welcome to today's show where I am going to discuss poetic justice from Biden, from the Proud Boys, and from the stock market. Stay tuned. <laughs> Welcome, brothers and sisters, to the Smart Sister Show. I am your host, Smart Sister. And today, we're going to talk about poetic justice. I love it. It's not the movie with Janet Jackson. It's poetic justice, and y'all know what that means. So, I'm going to talk about three areas. Poetic justice with the Proud Boys, poetic justice with the stock market, and then poetic justice with the first week of your new president, Joseph Biden. Okay, so let's begin <laughs> with the Proud Boys. Now, y'all know they had an Afro-Latino uh, dude, Coon, uh, that was their president, correct? Okay, they try to put on all these airs. You already know what's up with them. And he's a coon for being a part of it. And especially being the president of it. Well, 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 said the blind man. Uh, he's a snitch. <laughs> it came out this week. I guess he trumped up some other charges that he tried to get off on, so that's why they let him out. However, he has been a paid informant for, since 2014. So, like I said, poetic justice. Here it is, this cool Negro, because that's what he is. Uh, join your group made you feel all comfortable and, oh, you're practicing diversity. You let a black man come in and be your president and then come to find out his ass is a snitch. I thought I was going to bust a gut laughing. That shit is funny. Now, come on, y'all. That's funny. How this Negro going to sit up there now they know how we feel. <laughs> When your group gets infiltrated, and I guess he turned some evidence against like 13 people, we going to see. Because we all know this was an inside job, and it was some bullshit, and they going to let them all off, or they going to get a little slaps on the wrist, and that's it. But the funniest outcome of all of this to me is the fact that this Negro was a snitch. Okay, our next area to discuss is... Uh, the stock market, and you have Reddit versus Wall Street. Now, I will one day get into the the details, the deets on uh, what happened in the stock market. I'm not going to get all um, technical because a lot of you all that do invest, you understood what you understood what happened. But that's some of the things that we need to uh, start getting more well versed in, in the sense of using the stock market uh, for your own personal gain, and then it's a way that you can do activism. If anything, um, this week has shown how that works. Now, the basics with stocks are, you know. Um, you buy low, sell high, right? That's just the basic thing, okay? Um, basically, what a lot of these investors, the big boys with all the money, they make people feel like, say, a stock is going to tank. So that's what they did with uh, Game Shop. You know, their stock was only like, what, $20 last week? They made everybody feel like, oh, this is, uh, hmm. This is looks pretty bad. Uh, maybe I, I, uh, I'll get rid of mine. And then these guys come along and secretly buy up a lot. And then they let it out that, oh, wow, the stocks are doing great. Oh, my God. 
more and more people are buying the stocks. Oh my God. So what happened? The stock starts going up, 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 up. So it went from like 20 bucks to like 200 something bucks or whatever. And then what these guys do is then they sell it. They make all that profit and then the stock tanks again. Cause right. It wasn't like the company was doing anything. They manipulated the system. So all this shit is, is a scam. It's just crap shoot. It ain't, it's stupid. The whole stock market for the most part, that's what it's about. Scamming folks and getting money, getting paid, doing whatever. Well, okay. You had some millennials on Reddit that took advantage of this situation. What did they do? They did the same thing. They bought them low. And there were 2 million people in this Reddit, right? So when they started buying it, little by little, you know, maybe I'll buy five shares, you know, a hundred bucks. I could uh, let go of that. Then the stock started going up until it got to that two something. And then you sell it. Boom. You just made a lot of money. Okay. And not just. Uh, the Wall Street guys, so usually they're used to doing that, playing the system, making all that money. Then they skip to the next thing, the next thing, and the next thing. They just make all these hedge funds, whatever. That's what they do. Well, this little Reddit group ended up doing exactly like they did. So, yeah, a lot of people may have invested 100 bucks, 500 bucks, whatever, but they made a really nice return on it. Okay, now what do you do? You turn on the news and you hear these guys oh, crying like a bitch because <laughs> they lost billions. Okay, doing this shit all the time. But the little man got in on it this time. Okay, so a lot of people made their little money back. They're happy. Okay, they might have made a couple of grand at the most probably, or even more, according to whoever invested what. But that's just it. The little guy got in on it and manipulated the system so they could make some money. So now you turn on the news, like I said, and these all these Wall Street guys are crying like a bitch because they lost all that money because somebody beat them at their own game. That, my friends, is what we need to be doing. Use the system beat the system and get your money and keep it pushing. See, that's what they've been doing forever. So now they're talking about they need some regulation. What? When have you heard a bankster, a Wall Street person talk about more regulation? Are you kidding? No, you got your ass handed to you by some millennials on, on a, uh, uh, social media platform. And now you're ready to, uh, change everything. You know, black people just like with us, they want to change how many jurors and everything else. Like when OJ won, they couldn't fucking believe it. Like, well, okay, we get, uh, cause like I told y'all, white supremacy is always going to win. They're always going to try to manipulate things. So they come out smelling like a rose and so they win, but they don't win all the time. See, that's what y'all got to get out your head and defy the lie. Like white folks cannot be beaten. They cannot. Oh my God. We, we're just stuck. And, uh, uh, like I said, if we wasn't about shit, why do they try so hard to keep us down? Are you serious? They know how smart we are. One of the largest, um, uh, takeovers in, in history in the United States was Reginald Lewis. That did that we're Beatrice when y'all started seeing them commercials. We're Beatrice. That was a brother did that. He wrote a book. Why should white boys have all the fun? See, they know, they know this. They know the genius that we have. So we need to start using that to get where we got to go. That is what I hope to spend more time on next month where I want to get us into healing. We have to heal a lot of stuff that's in here in order to start thinking more freely, thinking more critically, so we can change our situation. Because if you stop and ask black people what is freedom and what's the struggle and what you're fighting for, you, they don't know. Let's be honest, people. 
So that is what I'm going to try to outline and do all of Black History Month. We need to, uh, one thing, y'all need to start learning more about uh, other black people than just Harriet Tubman and, and Martin Luther King and Malcolm X, maybe Malcolm X, because a lot of people don't even trip. Uh, you know, they, they got their Negroes they want to um, uh, talk about that's safe. So y'all don't won't see some of the things some black people have done when we got to win, okay? And they don't want you to know them people. So those are the people you need to talk about. I might even add that in my thing uh, for next month as well. Some little known uh, facts about people that have made a humongous difference in this country and how we need to get a return on investment. Since we're gonna start talking about business, and since I do have an MBA, that is some of the things we need to start talking about. A return on investment, people. We need to start suing every company that made money off of slavery. Damn, keep begging the United States for some money. Now, they need to give it up. But in the meantime, in between time, we need to be suing everybody. Who, who made all the money off the cotton? Where are they at? What did they pay? What they doing? Because y'all already know the uh, slave owners got reparations, right? Y'all know that, right? Look it up. As Malcolm would always say, just go look it up and you will see. So all y'all need to grow out there talking about, oh, we don't, you know, we can't ask for the, They gave it to their damn uh, slave owners. Look how much money we give Israel. Look how much money we give everybody money all over the damn place and the very people that built this damn country can't get a quarter so that's another topic so anyway poetic justice reddit versus wall street ding 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 the little guy got paid and i laughed my ass off again now all of them is one and they want regulation. Something went wrong. What happened? We need to do blah blah blah. All these people shouldn't be able to just invest. Blah, blah. See, anytime the stuff start coming back and making them lose, then everything's got to change. Well, hell with that. It's too many things. You know that app Robin Hood and all this other stuff where the little guy is sm getting smarter. And, and work in the system. That now, is it a good thing to do all of that? No. But I say, why not? Because they do it. They've been screwing us forever. And then look at all the uh, trillions of dollars in bailouts they get. So they can take that money and start over and, and bullshit and come up with some more drama and, and crap in the whole uh, system that's screwing you. So screw them. That's what I say. Hey. Poetic justice. Now, finally, the last poetic justice I'm laughing at is all of the folks that was loving on them some Biden and he kicking you in your ass already. Now, I already done been in some groups. People uh, are telling me, oh, my God, he's only been in for a week. What are you saying? Leave him alone. Give him a chance. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> I'm laughing because everything a lot of us in the black media have been telling you is he ain't going to do shit. And sure enough, voila, because even during the campaign, he told you he wasn't going to do uh, shit. Okay? Some of the main stuff we need, the main thing is we need to stop getting killed by the police. If uh, Later, okay, if you put everything else aside or whatever, I would think that would be a critical issue for us, right? But what does he do? Oh, he's signing all these executive boards. He's doing a lot. He's doing more than blah, blah, blah. He going in there trying to reverse everything that, that Trump did. Because that's the thing about an executive order. Since it's not a bill, since it's not policy, anybody, the next one could come and undo what you did. Just like what he's doing uh, in terms of 45, which is fine. However, you 
that put him in the office still didn't get none. If it was not for black people, he would not be sitting his old ass, not knowing where to pin on the desk, ass uh, <laughs> in there. Y'all saw that, didn't you? He was looking for the pen to sign the shit, okay? So, um, why is it that we, we act like battered women? Like, oh, it's okay. He's gonna, he's gonna do something. He'll change. He'll get there. Um, he just beat my ass, but that's okay. I'm still gonna go sleep with him tonight. At least he took the time to beat my ass because that shows he cares. <laughs> That's what some of y'all are acting like. Okay, you don't you if I bump into you or uh, talk about that weave, you ready to kill my black ass. But he can come in here, you put him in office, you got out there, and he ain't doing shit. The main thing too, I'm pissed about they promised two thousand dollars. All of the, the two senators down in Georgia, yes, as soon as we get in, we're going to make sure you get the $2,000. Biden was saying, yeah, as soon as they win and get in, we're going to get the $2,000. And then what is he doing? Backpelling, talking about, well, $1,400 because you just got six. That was under the Trump administration, right? The devil himself gave that six, 600 So what the fuck that's got to do with the 2000 you walking around talking about. And then now they're even looking at some more cuts because he's trying to work, uh, be bipartisan and work both sides of the aisle. Use about a lie. Okay, now you got the House and the Senate at this point. What are the Democrats going to do? And you got both uh, houses of the government uh, and you still tripping and you still uh, talking about bipartisanship. Fuck that. They didn't care about you. So he ought to just say, fuck this. Everybody gets $2,000. Write the damn uh, executive order. Make it happen. Damn weighing stuff and all oh, I'm going to ask and uh, maybe we can work. You know the Republicans going to fight every damn thing. You know that. Now if you got a little power, if you got the House and the Senate, why are you fucking around? Okay? Uh, Trump? Went on and gave the 600 and signed it off and then it was done. Later putting all the stipulations, all the bullshit on it. No, write the motherfucking check. That's all I got to say. Okay? And then here y'all go. How in the fuck is it going to take till March? Chuck Schumer standing his ass there looking stupid. See, that's the shit I'm talking about. They're both sides of the same fucking coin. What is there to wait on if all the, the people voted Democrat to try to see some changes, to try to see some stuff, and all that shit he's signing don't mean a fucking thing. Okay? You sitting up here that did all this voting, here he giving something to the Latinos for their vote, but they only voted 67%, I think. We voted 87%. For the Democrats. Okay, then you got the transgender. You already know the gay block of voters is not as big either. So now you about to fuck up uh, women's sports. I'm sorry, and anybody can get mad if they want to. I don't give a damn. If you want to be trans, no problem. Do your thing. Do your thing. Okay, but if that's just like Bruce Jenner, he still got his PP. Okay, look at his ass. Now, he used to be an athlete. Now, what would it look like if he went to go compete? He still got his PP, even though he didn't got the boobs done and everything else. He still is a man. I'm sorry. You all can want to be what you want to be, but you still biologically, however you came here. You know, I can say I want to be a damn gorilla. Okay, that don't make me one if I go and change and put some hair on myself <laughs> with some of y'all to your racist motherfuckers if you say I'm a gorilla. Fuck you. But anyway, uh, that's just it. You can want to be whatever you want to be. I ain't got no problem. Do you, boo? But you're not biologically a woman. So I don't think you should... Uh, compete against females. No. Get a transgender 
fucking female uh, team or category somewhere or whatever. Let y'all compete against each other. You should not be competing against women. I'm tired of this shit. I'm tired of people that you got to go change your birth certificate. You got, okay, do it. Do it. Okay. But the thing is, you still not a woman. I don't give a fuck. We can change pronouns. We can do whatever. Do you, but you still a man. And a woman that turns to a man is still a woman. I don't give a fuck. It's biology. It is what it is. I'm sorry. It just is. So we need to stop this bullshit. And, and what's going to stop whatever? What can I, I guess women... They turn to me and they not going trying to go play football and do shit because they get their asses kicked. Because you're not a man. Okay? I'm a big bitch. Okay? I got some, I'm about to be a linebacker my damn self. But that don't mean I'm going to get my fat ass out there and try to uh, butt heads with, with a real guy that's one. Are you kidding I, I'm just tired of some of this this political correct shit. I don't care what you do. You, you do you. But there's a line that has to get drawn somewhere. Now, you can play like a woman. You can even go get your, your penis cut off and become one, which you know is Bruce Jenner didn't ever get his cut off. See, he ain't nothing but a cross-dresser, honestly, because he ain't cut off nothing. He whatever, still like women. Come on. I don't I don't even understand that. But anyway, that's the shit this man 46 then came in and, and is signing. And then the one that really blew me away was the one about equity for Asians. Is that because of Kamala or Kamala and her peeps? Okay, or what I think they said because uh Trump was talking about the Kung flu and all that stuff. Then, you know, racist ass white folks go out and go fuck with people. They do it all the time. Whenever some issue comes up that they feel whatever, then they go mess with, be they Arab people, be they anybody dark, be it the Latinos. And then I guess some Asians caught some hell. Yes, the Asians caught some hell too, like we've been catching. However, there's an executive order to uh, protect them. Now, who done been after with more than us? Everything that got done to us. No executive order for that. Yet. I mean, at least he could say something about the, the police like uh something but here everybody else can get protected everybody else can get something everybody else but us and like i said if it wasn't for us he wouldn't be sitting there so some of y'all can go and keep acting like a battered woman uh if you want to uh but the, we've got to start getting a return on our investment simple as that that's all that's all i'm saying so that's the the poetic justice of Biden, okay, and and I don't think I think I'm gonna be sitting here saying the same shit four years from now. Now all of y'all can go and get up and and get all upset. My thing is, and especially with Trump, since everybody's so scared of him, he is one motherfucker. And if all the people around him did what he said, and and everybody uh, just threw their hands up and all this shit, whose fault is that? That's all I'm saying. Anybody else would catch hell. They want that shit. Just like these people want to keep shit the same way. Just like the damn stock market, Proud Boys, all of you ain't never heard of a pre-dawn raid on the Proud Boys, the Boogaloo Boys. None of them have you. The Klan, but they come in and kill us like it ain't shit. So all I'm saying, people... You got to get your mind right. You got to, fabulous said, push your mind right and start thinking in terms of what's best for you. Stop acting like a battered woman that's going to take anything and anything, little crumb somebody gives you, you happy for it. When you didn't pay the price, your ancestors have paid the price, all of us have put a lot on the line from our health, our wealth, everything.
And so you got to start thinking about that and getting your shit together. Because, baby, time is of the essence. Because if, if white folks have it their way, we done. End of story. End of story. They don't give a shit. They're not going to pass nothing for you. They're not going to do nothing for you. And why should you keep begging? And hoping and praying that something's going to happen. You better get out here and make it happen. And that's what I'm going to talk about. But first, we got to heal. We've got to understand, why do so many of us feel that way? Why do so many of us feel, well, you know, Masa Charlie, and I'm going to just start calling them Chuck. I ain't even going to say white supremacy no more. I'm going to say Chuck keep on doing what he doing because they living uh the life that they want they're doing what the hell they want they letting each other off they whatever they doing what they want that doesn't mean that you got to keep taking it or that you can't uh create the environment in the community that you want so that's where we got to get to at this point in time and get it together and i love you i keep telling i'm gonna tell you every show i love you dearly okay and so until we get to that point where we love ourselves we love each other we love our people um nothing's gonna change you know they can talk about putting harriet tubman on a 20 dollar bill what the fuck is that we don't need no black face on no money this dead blood fucking money of this country that's the last place i would want to pay homage to her and then some of y'all gonna argue that well it shouldn't be her it should be frederick Douglass. y'all arguing and talking over some bullshit that ain't nothing but a symbolic gesture anyway that probably ain't never gonna happen leave them white dead men on that money because it's dirty money it's blood fucking money so we don't need to be on it. If you want a currency, create our own and our own nation and have our own shit. And then you can put a whoever you want on your money. That's the way we need to be thinking about a nation within a nation. Or either just go and get the hell out. Okay? Because I'm not going to stay here and keep taking this shit. Me personally. Okay? So that is it this week. And I will see y'all in the next month. Can you believe it? A new month is on Monday. And here, this year already going by fast. And, and it, it, it's insane. So time waits for no one. So we got to get on it. All right? So you all have a great week. And I will see you next time. And remember, uh, as our Egyptian brothers and sisters said, know thyself.